Welcome, Mark Norman, who's sitting in an apartment in New York that I really, I want a tour, I want a virtual tour of because you've got a neon sign in your kitchen. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty bad. We're moving out. You can see some boxes up here on top of the fridge, and uh, this is all boxes behind me. What what are the boxes for? Up. We're moving out. Me and the lady, uh, we're we're hitting the, we're going to higher ground here. We're moving on up in the world to the east side. Where are you now? West Village, Greenwich Village, and we're moving to. Uh, we're on about Seventh Avenue. We're moving to Six. And how far uptown? No, no, not really uptown. I'm, I just wanted to sound like the yeah. Jeffersons. Yeah. But uh, no, we're actually moving pretty laterally, just a little more east. Sixth Avenue and what? Well, I don't want to give my whole uh, Social Security away here, but, you know, 6th Avenue near uh, the, you know... Uh, In the teens? West 4th Okay. IFC Theater, you know, above Houston, you know. Nice, nice. Fun area. Yeah, I lived you on... Uh, I owned a place on 6th Avenue and 16th Street for a lot, lot uh, of years. Chelsea. Yeah, it was sort of Chelsea. And, um, you know, it's. I'm happy to hear that you're... Um, cohabitating because based on your special um or, or i didn't see your whole special i saw a lot of it i don't know if you talk about it but it seems like you have some serious relationship issues <laughs> intimacy and entrapment yes. and all that yes boy you're you've hit it right on the head fatty i'm scared of commitment i'm scared <laughs> of uh settling down we life is long we act like marriage is this willy-nilly thing right. i don't ever want to get divorced and Everybody's so, uh, so, uh, what's the word? Just like fluid about it. Oh yeah, I'll get married. Hey, it's I'm 34. That's what you do. I'll have a kid. I hate and not get an abortion. And it just doesn't Jeez. seem. No one thinks it out. The, but the, but the the flip side of that, which is me, which is that you can find somebody who really brings you joy and peace and yes. and a sense of groundedness, and you can have children. Sure. Who you sure. f- who you laugh with and uh, grow up and adore you and you become friends with. I mean, it's it's kind of what life is all about. I hate to tell you. I get, but I'm a cynical cunt. I mean, how many people have said this is the love of my life? I'm I'm, I'm head over heels. I-, I hear music. Doves are flying, and then seven years later. This is the worst divorce of my life. Uh, she took half my money, or he cheated on me, or whatever the hell, and it's all shit. Well, statistically, only about 50% of the time. So, you know, ha- glass exactly. is half full. You're a glass is half empty guy. I am a huge half empty guy. And look, comedy is a huge gamble and all that, but like, at least you have some control over it and your feelings get hurt. I don't want to hurt anyone else's feelings. I yeah. Don't wanna, I don't want anyone relying on me and... Uh, so it's a lot of therapy and a lot of money, but uh, I'm, I'm getting better. And what? Uh, <laughs> how is your girlfriend deal with all of this? I mean, is it is that? She's, I always feel like in every relationship, there's one fight that you just keep having on yes. in different forms, and I would imagine that's your guys' fight. Wow, boy, you are on fire today, yeah. there, four eyes. You're killing it. I just. <laughs> It's, it comes up every 10 minutes, it feels like. And look, she's right. She's normal. She's a like a normal human being. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm a psycho, and she's a saint for dealing with me. So, you know, I'm a lucky guy in that way. But don't you ever have that fun thing where you, you met your, you introduced your wife to your parents or your mom or whoever, and you were like, you get to see a normal person react to your psycho parents and, you know, what made you so weird? Right, right. Now That's that is fun. that is definitely I think it helps the relationship because it takes the onus off of your faults when you can see that they were <laughs> handed to you. You're, yes. you're you're really doing yourself a favor when you right. introduce your significant lover to to the factory. Here's here's the broken factory that I came from. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, look, they don't they don't have any uh health care over here. They're underpaying us. It's a sweatshop in this house. Yeah. And they the conveyor belt they're supposed to check you out on, they just skip yeah. that. Yeah. It was like I love Lucy over here with yeah. the, with the fucking chocolates in my house. And well, it's a I think shit it's, factory. It's 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 all a factory when you think about it, because we are the definition of like every single uh, legislation that's been put in place to help workers through unions or through fucking FDR, 
yeah. are broken when you're raising children. They are, you work them, you're, you know, as a parent, you're being worked 150 hours a week. You get no breaks. Yeah. You're, you're sexually uh, harassed by your husband nonstop. Right. It's a horrible factory. Horrible, horrible. I mean, it, you should get workers' comp, and you should get sued. There be, should, should be a lot of lawsuits there. Yeah. It should get shut down. Like, you know, they put the A, the B, the C on top of a restaurant yeah. on the glass? They should put a big <laughs> D on my dad's forehead. That's hilarious. Every house should have a letter <laughs> rating on the front of it. Yeah, based completely. On how they raise their kids. <laughs> yeah, your kid's a doctor. Here's an A. Your kid's a comic. Here's a big fat F. Right. Then if you wanna if you wanna adopt, then you know they've got to You got to show them. You got to show the uh, the rating, the letter rating. Right. Do right. you have yeah, Do you have yeah. siblings that have similar issues? Well, my brother's a a great guy. Like I'm a piece of garbage, but he's you know he's the perfect son. Certified genius. Skipped his senior year of high school. He went to the best high school in New Orleans. Skipped his senior year to go straight to college, full scholarship. Then he joined the Peace Corps in Africa for two years, helping. Kids learn math in French, mind you, and then now he works for some computer company. He's a, married to a doctor. He's got two kids. He's got a house. I mean, he's oh, and I, you're and fucked. I tell dick jokes. You're I'm fucked. fucked. It's horrible. Yeah, but do you know? Do you know how many comedians that are total fuck ups are the successful one in their family? You know, <laughs> I mean, I at guess. least you get to be the black sheep comedian. Right, right. I guess, but. I'm the f- I'm f- he's not funny, so that's good. He's he's a little robotic, and every Thanksgiving he has four beers and grabs my arm and goes, "Don't do it." <laughs> and uh, does he really? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's just like, look, it's a hard life. My kids are crying yeah. all day. Yeah. I'm out of money. With a, we got to buy a fucking minivan, you know. So right. I get it. So I, I'm on a private jet with Jerry Seinfeld. I'm doing some some theater, and so it's a gamble, and it's a. It's a toss-up of, of who's got a better life and who's more yeah. fulfilled. Right. And I'll take mine any day. Yeah, well, I guess that's that's the thing that you have to remind yourself sometimes when you're depressed. Like I, I have depression, and uh, but 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 as bad as it gets, I honestly don't think there's a time where I would ever switch my life with somebody else's. And that's not to say my life is perfect, you know. Of course. But it's the life I crafted, and I've made a lot of choices. And I've worked really hard. And this is the best version of life that I can come up with. I'm living in Venice Beach, California. Arguably the fucking coolest place to live. I've got a hot wife who's still got a good rack. My kids are reasonably well acclimated to life. I make a very nice living. Yeah. And uh, I own a house. you're in showbiz. I'm in showbiz. I've never been on Jerry Seinfeld's jet, but I was on Paul Reiser's jet. Oh, that's the same thing. No, not really. Well, but. you know, uh, curly-haired Jews who were big yeah. in the 80s. That's it's right. similar. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you both had huge sitcoms. No, you're good. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan, so I know all about you. And you got a decent hog on you, which is nothing to sneeze at. And uh, I think you're doing all right. I mean, the... <laughs> That's that already would, a, a that would too. obviously That would obviously be the YouTube clip that would go up this week on social media. <laughs> Right. I would kill for a big hog. That's, yeah. uh, well, thank I, you for bringing that up, because I think it's important that that uh, good rumors are perpetuated, you know? Yes, yes. Good sexual rumors are rare. No, but thank you for saying that, and I feel like, um, you know, right back at you. You're a, you're a comic after my own heart. You know, you came to New York, made your bones in the New York City clubs among really the best comics in, I mean, there's, yeah. there's a there's a lot of good comics in L.A., but New York is people are singularly focused on the stand up. It's its own. Yes. It's its own beginning, middle and end. And yes, uh, let's focus on sneakers for sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no offense, L.A. <laughs> but I'm, I mean, I did a show last night in a like at a bar and it was like an outdoor thing. And David Tell shows up, you know, and he's got new Corona shit. And uh, yeah, it's just it was uh, it was fun. It's like. Oh yeah, this is why I live here. I mean, yeah. Fucking David Tell's got new Corona material, and he's wearing shorts and a black button down with long sleeves <laughs> and <laughs> combat boots for some reason. But he's still a fucking comedy savant. Uh, that's amazing. Is that the first show you've done since it started? No, no. I've been I've been a bad boy. I've been all over the road uh, doing doing clubs. I was doing the fifty percent 
capacity improvs. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, I I took a gamble. I think I had Corona in February, so I think I got rid of it or whatever you want to call it. And uh, so I've been, I mean, I'm doing the social distancing. I wear a mask and all that, but like, but you're not wearing a mask on stage though. No, but the people, if they want to wear a mask, they wear a mask. All the waiters wear masks. I mean, it's up to them if they want to come out. But there's a uh, fair amount of people that don't have masks on in the audience, right? Yes. And yes. they're laughing, which, which is the equivalent of <laughs> coughing in your direction. Yes. Yes. Coughing equals cough in. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I'm not going to any hot spots. I've canceled a bunch of dates since, but I've, it felt like it was kind of coming back. The world was coming back. So yeah. I said, oh, fuck it. I'll go out a little bit. And now that it's spiking again, I canceled everything. Let me ask you this. Um, is because my my agent told me that the whatever money I was promised, I ain't getting anymore. And it, now it's no. like a door deal. You get like a percentage of the door. Is that how it worked? No, I get a guarantee, and it's very low. But also, I live in a shoebox. I'm fighting with my uh, large-breasted, also ample-breasted uh, significant other, and I got no square footage. So part of me is like, yeah, fuck it. I'll go to. I'll go to Wisconsin. No, I missed that. I'd, I'd, I'd like, yeah. I'd like to see a flight or get on a plane. I'd like to see a hotel room and do some jokes and make, you know, no, a little money is better than no money. No, and also, you know, I've been doing this shit for 31 years, and it is without ever taking off. I've never taken off more than two or three weeks in 31 Same. years. Same. And so for me, the rhythm of my life has been so changed Yes. That I find myself driving past the airport and feeling drawn to it. Like, I want <laughs> to go through airport security. I want to, like, the, just the fucking, the amount of stimulus that we get. And you live in New York City in the village, so you're getting a lot of stimulus anyway. And Venice is pretty colorful. But there's something sure. about being in airports where you're seeing little kids falling down. And you're seeing a hot chick. And you're seeing a... You know, uh, an old guy, guy with running. a young woman. Is it the daughter? <laughs> is it the girlfriend? Like, your mind is just going. Yes. And and now, uh, you know, I miss that kinetic energy. Completely. And we do more in a weekend than some people do in two years. You know, we're going, uh, I remember flying, okay, I'm doing a gig in Salt Lake City at Wise Guys. Oh, there's no Sunday show, but we picked up a theater gig in Toronto on Sunday. So you fly from Wise Guys to Sunday. Now you're in Customs. Then you're in Canada. You're in a different country. Yeah. You do two shows at the theater. You 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 get hammered. Then you fly back the next morning. You forget your passport. You got to go back and uh, whatever it is. Yeah. And then you're back in your apartment uh, Monday at noon, and you're like, ah, oh, that was crazy. Yeah. And you got a million people. You sold some merch. You tried new jokes. You had a, a fight on the plane. I mean, there's so many little things. Yeah. Some people go. A lot of people go. Oh, we're going to Charlotte this year, you know, with the kids, and then maybe we'll go to Disneyland, and that'll be it for us. Yeah, Ooh, that's crazy. I gotta take a nap, you right. know. And you're like, what are you kidding? This weekend, I went to fucking uh, Hawaii for a festival. Well, not only that, I don't think about it. Like when I have yes. to do those tours, it to me, it's just like that's the job, and I I have trained myself to be very zen like with travel, and I just I shut down Same. a little bit. I emotionally yeah. come down. I compress the emotions. I go through it, and then when it's my family's turn to do something for pleasure, I don't have that same sort of infallibility. I suddenly yes. become kind of a pussy. Right, isn't that interesting? Because you yeah. kind of it's like a mob mentality. You just kind of go with the sheep yeah. vibe. You know, we're we're miserable. I'm miserable. You yeah. know, you're cranky. I'm cranky. Right. And but I I don't know. I mean, a plane. Colin Quinn always says a plane is the only time he gets any peace because your phone doesn't work. Yeah. The Wi-Fi is off. You got you're just sitting quietly, maybe watching a movie, maybe reading. Yeah, and I feel the same way. Like sometimes, if you can spin it, like oh, I got a four hour flight, that could be a nightmare, or it could be I got a four hour spa in a way. Right. Everybody wonders why comedians have so much air air airport materials yeah. because that's when we're writing. That's the yes. only time we have peace. Yes. By the way, I hate these cunts that go, "Oh, an airplane joke, a real." It's not the fucking. The subject matter, it's the bit. Right. It's the singular bit. You know, Louis C.K. has brilliant airport jokes yeah. because he's a good comic. So, yep. like, don't just hear airport and check out. I hate that. I remember hearing that same thing from, um, I forget the comic, but I had kids, and my new material was about having kids. And he goes, 
Right. Oh, you're going to, you turned into one of those guys that talks <laughs> about their kids. I'm like, no, I always was the guy that talks about his life, whatever yes. the fuck that form of it is. Right. And that's what a good comedian does. Of course, of course. And also, not to mention, this one chooch is upset about kids because he can't get it up or has right. no date coming. But every other person can is like, oh, now I like this comic. Now it's yeah. relatable. Right. So you lose one, you gain a million. So do you do you see it ever happening? Do you think someday you will have a kid? I love the idea of the fat, like throwing the ball, the catch, and the, the, catch uh, the nookies, yep. and, the, and the Christmases, and uh, the whole thing, but... All the in-between stuff, so real kick in the dick. The bathing, yeah. the uh, flipping the plate over because they're not hungry, and yeah. the screaming, and the, the ruining flights. and yeah. Uh, I, but I here's, know, the, here's my question to you, Mark Norman. Yeah. Road Please. comic extraordinaire, young guy who is uh, on all the lists. I, was, I went to your website. You're on all the lists. Village uh, Voice is Best Comedians of 2013. Uh-huh. Comedy Central's Comics to Watch in 2011. Esquire's Best New Comedians 2012. <laughs> All right, you're killing me here. Side Splitters, Top 10 Up and Coming Comedians. <laughs> Time Out New York's 21 one. New York comedy scene lynchments. You're on all the lists. I was back when uh, the lists were, you know, less, uh, less casting. Yes. We'll say. There's not a lot of straight white guys on the list anymore. Right, right. They're on a list, but it's a negative list. But let me ask you this. Our, and, you know, gauging, obviously our stand-up is a projection. It's, you know, it's, it's an exaggeration. Right. But would you say that you are happy at this point? And that's a, that's a very sort of like, you know, ephemeral term. But, like, do you feel content at this point? Uh, yeah, I feel pretty good. I just, I want the respect. I don't right. need... Fame, and I don't want to be a Seinfeld level guy who can't walk through an airport. That seems like a nightmare to me. Not to mention the internet backlash you get when you have some any glimmer of success. Uh, so that's terrifying. But yeah, I just like showing up to like a guy's bar show, and they're like, "Oh, hey, yeah, you want to go on and all that." And you're like, "Oh, wow, all that work paid off." And yeah. I just want like comedy fans to go, oh, Mark's got a new whatever out. Let's check it out. I like this guy. You know, you want to be like a Tarantino where, oh, he's got a movie? We got to go. Yeah. You, that's what I want people to see my comedy as, and that's it. I don't I don't need a zillion dollars and all that, whatever. But uh, So, yeah, in that way, I'm happy. But still, I mean, I can complain all day. Like, I can't get a special. I can't sell anything. I've pitched the show a million times, and I can't get the show off the ground. And yeah. I, I feel like I have no juice in the industry and yada yada yada. So well, that's y you know, I'm you know, happy, but that's but like, do you consider that a trade off of remaining a New York City comic? Because you know, maybe. there's a, there's a lot of guys that have stayed in New York and uh, maybe could have been you know bigger in the industry if they didn't. But then I also think there's an argument that you can be like Greg Giraldo was always well, right. no, no, he never got anything that really stuck, but he was always like in pilots and getting yes. deals and. You know all that heroes. stuff. So I don't know. Yeah. It's a. Do you think that there's that, that there's an equal trade off? Because I do think when a New York guy comes to L.A., he can line up meetings. Whereas if you live out here, sometimes it's harder to get those same meetings because they take you for granted. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, uh, isn't that ironic? If you're the uh, if you're the outsider guy, it's special when you do the improv. You know, yeah. like, we got to get this guy. And then if you move there, they go, yeah, well, yeah, blow me. We've seen you. Yeah, but. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if L.A. is the is the big uh, game-changing move as much as it used to be. I mean, if anything, I'd rather go out to L.A. and do Rogan and get a ton more followers or uh, asses in seats. Yeah. Because everything else is such a crapshoot. I mean, I can't tell you how many auditions I've put on tape and really dressed up. I'm doing Mark Twain. I got a fake mustache, a monocle, and, <laughs> and a business suit on, like going all in. <laughs> And, you know, I got my girlfriend holding a, a boom thing or a mechanics light creeper thing, just trying to get some light on me. And I got yeah. music in the background and put my heart and soul to these things and never seen a callback. Nothing. So yeah. I think I, Brian, you start I think, to just go with what works. Sorry. I think Brian Callen got that uh, Mark Twain thing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's always well, him. He got, he's always my guy. Every time I go to an audition, he's signing in ahead of me. And I'm like, <laughs> I just put the pencil down. And I say, right. do you validate parking? Nah. <laughs> well, he's, he's, a, he's a talent, but I heard he got the Rona. 
Did he really? I heard he caught it. I mean, this is all hearsay, but I heard oh, he, he lives it. A, he lives a block from me, and he drove Ooh. past me three days ago. Uh, yeah. I was on my bike, so we just yelled at each other, but uh, I'll have to Perfect. find out. I thought Keep you were going to say on. he got me too. That's that's Everybody else oh. in L.A. is getting me too lately. I saw, I saw. It's uh, it's it's wild in these crazy times, you know, corona, pandemic, Black Lives Matter, uh, police, defund. It's like, now we got to throw Me Too in? Like, yeah, it's getting ugly. Like, what, what are we doing? Do we want this crock pot to overflow even more with, with tension? Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't stop a guy who's a, a rapist, of course, but like, I don't know, it just feels like we, we like problems. Yeah, it seems like people don't like peace. People, yes. you know, there's a, it's a, it's almost like I think this country became so successful for so right. many people that we got bored, you know? Yes. It I feels mean, like that. Uh, what do you think about the statue thing? Because I feel mixed. Sometimes I feel mm. like a statue should, should stay up as a reminder. Right. Uh, like almost like, almost like say you get a girl's, a girl's name tattooed on your arm and she turns <laughs> out to be a cunt. Right. You should have to keep that name on your arm to remind you to, you know. Yeah, that you fucked be more up. Di- have more discretion with who you're dating. Yes, I hear you. Like, it, the N-word in Huck Finn, I think, should stay in. Because the guy wrote the fucking book. It was a different time. That's what people said. That's history. The statues coming down, I kind of get. Because if you were black, it's just a reminder that... Also, here's a, here's a clinker about the statue that nobody brings up. They were put up during Jim Crow. It wasn't like they had the revolution and they just put them up. They were put up in later years as a reminder, like, yeah, we lost, but don't forget who's in charge here there, right, Darkie. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I think that's that's the shiv right in the kidney with a twist. It's yeah. not just these statues. It's when they put them up. And I, I get it. Look. I think it's a little much to be like Columbus is the is Hitler, and you're like, all right, all right, the guy b- flew here or you know took a boat here, and uh, you know whatever. But like, I get the I get the the statues <laughs> coming down. I get it. I I'm love, not gonna pull one down. I love your I vivid it. historical depiction of <laughs> Columbus. I get it. He took a boat here, and yeah, whatever. <laughs> and Can he I... killed a bunch of people. <laughs> that should go on his Wikipedia page. Yeah, <laughs> and source you. They should source you on that. No, I think it's I think it's like, it's a good point because like the Confederate flag they say wasn't really a big part of the Civil War. It came up I think during Jim Crow as well. Yes, yes, exactly. I think it was a bit of a an FU to the uh to the pigmented, the darker pigment folk. <laughs> but I don't know I don't know if, if pulling a statue down helps anything. I think it just it helps feel better. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of is a symbol of like, yeah, we're making some changes around here and you know, I'm I'm okay with it. Yeah, it's a it's a slippery slope because then you do wonder, like you said, where do you draw the line? Like, at what point down the road do we stop being so fluid with our more moral judgments that yes. you know what stays up? I don't know. I I really feel mixed about it, but that's that's my fucking problem, Mark Norman. I'm not <laughs> one of these comics that comes out and says, "Here's how it is." And yes. they fucking and then they yell they yell at the crowd they explain Good. it you know to be Bill Burr oh to be Bill Burr you know where uh, he's got yeah. it all well, figured out crowds fucking love that they don't like the guy that goes up and goes I kind of see this way <laughs> but I also kind of see that way I'm gonna take a nap <laughs> well at least you're not just fake you know like oh whatever that's that's the way the wind's blowing yeah I'm a hundred percent on board it's like right. well, what you're a fucking pussy that's what that is like. Also, that's. I just think we're we got a problem with discussion in America. We can't yeah. discuss. Discussion is out, and discussion is key. If we can't discuss, what's the point of even having any opinion? Because you just go, "Oh, this is wrong." Well, then I'm a piece of shit. I get fired, and then you hate me. Right. But what about this? Ah, now nah, you're out. It's like that's not going to help anything, and it's going to be the death of our society if we can't discuss. Yeah, and that's. I think it started on the college campuses, and colleges were. Uh, you know, initially set up as a place to yes. to discuss and to argue. And I feel like, you know, ha- have the speaker, have fucking Condoleezza Rice come to your campus or, or whoever that's going to cause controversy. And then 
make them do a Q&A and then have student discussions after it and then let people write op-ed pieces in the local newspaper and then people yes. can respond to the pieces and let, let everybody glean some understanding on their own from it instead of just having this aggregate opinion on everything. I completely agree, and it's it's so close-minded, ironically. Their whole thing is open-mindedness and, and compassion, and yet there's no compassion or, or open-mindedness. Like, they just go, uh, they actually sound like Trump. They hate Trump, but they're like, nope, that's how it is, and yeah. move on, and if you disagree, I will ruin your life. And you're like, right. wait, what? Like, right. Look at a, mi- a micro version. Okay, speeding is illegal. You speed, you go to jail. Whatever. Pretty simple. Let's say my pregnant wife is giving birth in the back of my car, so I'm speeding to try to get to the hospital, and I get pulled over, and I go, hey, I'm just trying to get her to the hospital. I'm sorry I'm speeding, but this is an emergency. And they go, yeah, but you're speeding. Yeah. Well, I mean, there should be a little bit of back and forth here. Like, right, uh, right. You know, and I feel like that's how we are with everything. Like, you know, this guy said fag in 1988. Well, yeah, he's homophobic. No, know. it was a different time. He was... Uh, Maybe he was gay. I, he's going through some shit. We, it was a normal word. Yep, he said it. It's like, yeah. So what? That's just it. We're just like that. That's so stupid. That's that's the definition of stupid. I know. And it's ah. like when you see people, like when um, when Kevin Hart, who I know you're a huge fan of, because you sign off every <laughs> one of your shows saying this is Kevin Hart. Yeah. Like when he didn't host the Oscars because he'd said something uh, fucking yeah. ten years before. It was just like, you know. And I love what he did. He went, oh yeah, all right. Fuck it. Yeah. I won't do it. Yeah, I agree. I'm that's with the, him. That's the only way to handle it. Look, we've remember in the nineties it was nobody's perfect. Now it's if if you're not perfect, we're gonna find out and ruin your life. Yeah, right. Yeah, the Joey Diaz thing really bothers me because you know, what he said out of context, you don't know Joey Diaz, horrific. Disturbing. Right. Of course. Of but course. But if you know Joey Diaz and you've been in a comedy room where he's performing and you get that like Archie Bunker, who plays a character, he is not... Guess what? No one sucked Joey Diaz's dick. Have you seen Joey <laughs> Diaz? He doesn't get I his know, dick right? sucked. So he's right. he's spinning a tale, he's playing a character, and I, I don't think it completely excuses it because I do get where people would be offended by that. But at the yeah. same time, uh, I don't think any credence was given to the fact that he is a, uh, a performer and, and is a character. I know, and I find a lot of irony in the fact that these people who want, they, they, they watch that video and they're furious, and I get it. You don't know Joey Diaz, you don't know his shtick, you don't know his whole thing, but Joe Rogan and the other I forget who the other guy was, they are laughing hysterically, and they're like, look at these sick men laughing, and then... They, this side cancels somebody and they love it and they're they're now they're the laughers and yeah. they're they're the ones enjoying somebody's somebody's downfall and somebody's mocking right, and ridiculing. Right. It's like don't you see the mirroring going yeah, on here? Yeah. It, it's always that way. It's always who smelt it, dealt it. Like remember the gay guy, the guy who hates gays turns out to be blowing dudes under the bridge. You know it, right. it happens every time. Yeah. And, that's where that's where the compassion has to come in. That's when the rational, critical thinking has to come in. But nobody wants to do that. It's almost the allure of ruining someone and looking like a hero and patting yourself on the back is so strong that it feels like people for, don't want the truth. They just want that win so bad that, that it clouds their judgment. And then they get canceled. And then they go, oh, fuck, this is horrible. I'm like, it shouldn't have to come to this for you yeah. to realize how sick this is. Ah, I'm sorry. Right, there's no, there's bitch. a joy in taking people down. There's, a, it's, yes. you know, we've always had it. I mean, going we've back, had it. going back to fucking, you know, Marilyn Monroe and the news right, and like, right. we've always wanted to build people up and then pull them down and, and to feel righteous about it. And that's sort of what we signed up for when we got into show business. And granted, it's gotten worse, but that yeah. dynamic has always been there. And, uh, you know, how you deal with it is, uh, you know, I'm like you. I've got a whole routine about how I crawled my way to the middle, and I'm staying yeah. right there. I love the love middle. the middle. Nobody love fucking harasses middle. me, you know, and I just kind of like, you know, if the project I'm on, if I'm on a show and it gets canceled, guess what? I sure as fuck wasn't the lead. Doesn't hurt me. <laughs> if I write on a show, I'm probably not the showrunner, so if it ends... Yeah. Nobody's talking about how my show got canceled, and I go on to the next show right away. It's fucking beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you got a 
killer resume. You must have just a Schindler's list of failed sitcoms under your yep. belt. Then yep. you can you can just slip right into any writer's room. You have so much experience. And it's also like um no longer important to me that I'm on a show that's going to win an Emmy or be considered right. a cool show. I want to be in a show where I respect the people, they treat me with dignity, we work reasonable hours, and then, oh yeah, oh yeah, I hope it's a good show, but right. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, I'll do my here, best here. work, I, I'll try to make it as good as it can be, but it's it's no longer as important to me as just, um, um, you know, I don't define myself, even by stand-up. Like you said, I don't want to be Jerry Seinfeld. I like, I like, like I do, I joke about it when my crowds aren't sold out. I'm like, I'm not one of those guys that makes you uncomfortable and packs you in a room where people are breathing <laughs> down your neck. You got a little, you can put your feet up on my shows. I, I do that for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good angle. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I'd like to be as funny or funnier than Jerry. I think we can all get to that level, yeah. but that sitcom and all that, I feel like that's kind of, it's come and gone. Like a guy like Andrew Schultz, who's killing it on YouTube, I mean, this guy was turned down by every you know network and industry and all these people, and he just did it himself, and it's he's getting more views than Jimmy Fallon, and it's honest, it's topical, it's current, and it's it's finally real. I mean, I think that's why Joe Rogan is so popular, like him or not. It's fucking a guy with a T-shirt on going, huh? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. What are you talking about? You ever do DMT? You ever do drugs? Right. Oh, you ever get a good blowjob? Or whatever the hell he's saying. Yeah. And Fallon is going, blowjob? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, oh, shut up. Who wants to listen to this? I mean, look, I'll do the show anytime. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I think authenticity yeah. is, is too important now. And we've tasted it, and we can't go back. Yeah. No, it's true. And I think that... Uh, you, you know, like how how you monetize it all is the thing that's transitioning right now. Like your your special that uh, that's really really good, by the way. Oh, I thanks! Really I really enjoy it. it. It's um, we just hit two million views today, by the way. Fun fact. Oh, fantastic! Less than two months, so so the public is clamoring. Wow, that's really great. Um, thanks, thanks. And, and what is it called? Eating lunch or something? <laughs> Out to lunch, <laughs> out to lunch, and I noticed the, the the picture, the cover is you, in a donut shop. Yeah, you got a donut in your hand. You're wiping yeah. your mouth. Here we go. But Mark, you haven't taken a bite of the donut yet. <laughs> this is Donut Gate. This is the the internet. They just find one the one flaw and they glom on. Oh, is this it. already been said? Oh my God! I got eight zil. I got more emails about the donut no bite than the fucking jokes. Uh. Uh, that's the internet. <laughs> it's like your little brother has to put his thumb right up your uh, asshole. That's but uh, it was my second donut. All right, so I'm I'm wiping <laughs> from the first donut. There you go. Everybody happy? Yeah, yeah. And I thought I was breaking new ground. Um, so you so you put the special out on. YouTube. So, how did you finance shooting it? I mean, I was making a little little scratch at the time because uh, I, you know, I had a few few credentials under my belt. So, I was finally selling tickets for the first time in my life. You know, September of nineteen on, and uh, you know, I did a couple Rogans, did some pods, did this, did that, some Conans, you name it, and it was finally cooking. Then the Rona hit, oh, but uh, Jesus. I just made uh, some real dough for a while there, and. I find I've paid like fifteen grand, and we sold out the Dynasty typewriter two shows, and we said, well, "Fuck it, let's do it here." It was on a whim, and thank God I shot it when I did, and uh, put it out. You know, edited it, put it out, and it, it worked. Pandemic, great time to drop a special. So you did the whole thing for fifteen thousand dollars? Yeah, yeah. Good for you, man. That's amazing. Thanks, and, thanks. And then with the and then with the two million views, you then you're making revenue from YouTube, right? You got that right. So How? I've already made my money back. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So you start to get these Louis models, you know, like, fuck it, I'll, I'll charge eight bucks. I mean, the guy made millions on that. Yeah. And everybody hates him. Right. So imagine if people didn't hate you. <laughs> did, um, did you put out clips of the special as well, or did you just drive people to the special in its entirety? I put out clips after just to keep that 
train on the tracks, you know. But uh, I really did a lot. I built. I made a trailer. I shot a little sizzle. I really pumped it up. I got some big names to retweet it. You tweeted it. I appreciate it. Of course. And uh, yeah, and that that's all it took. I, and it you know word of mouth hits, and that's really your that's really your best tool, the word of mouth. So if it's I mean, I put my heart and soul to that thing of four years of, of funny bones building yeah, that thing. Right. And eating my ass and soccer moms walking out and, you know, people in camo hats with a limp and a rascal hating me and uh, just put it together <laughs> tight as a drum. And then we had a good set with the filming. So it all worked out. But yeah, yeah it's I, tight. I, it's fucking uh, tight, thanks. man. You get a lot of jokes in there and uh, and they're all solid. Um, Thank the, you. Uh, my favorite joke, well, not my favorite joke, but there was a joke that that deserved a laugh but didn't get one, which <laughs> yeah. was you you were talking about talking to Alexa and and she's and she's acting like a real girlfriend and she goes, yeah. "Well, why don't you just ask Siri?" Yes. Which is that so fucking hits. funny and it didn't get anything. That's how that's how <laughs> these shows are. The 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 Dynasty crowd is a little precious, if I might say so. Uh-huh. And I think anything touching on like women or race or gay yeah. or trans, they were kind of like, "Hey, this is this is L.A., buddy. Take it easy." Um, so that one, I could have sweetened it, but I said, "Ah, fuck it. Let's keep it how it is." Now I hate it when every single joke is getting the same level of laughter. I mean, I agree. The best comedy, one of the best comedy specials of all time, is Andrew Dice Clay, "The Night the Comedy Died," <laughs> where he goes, <laughs> oh, he man. shows up at Dangerfields. There's like yeah. 30 people there. They didn't know he was stopping by. They're not yeah. all fans, and he fucking bombs, but he owns it. It's just like it's yeah. such a like lesson in how to how to be. Even when you're doing well, you should have that energy. You shouldn't give a fuck. I completely agree. Uh, do you ever watch UFC? A little bit. I've been getting into it. I'm not a big fighter guy either, but like I've been getting into it, and I noticed that the best fighters are the ones who can take a hit and keep going. Right. It's not just the best punches and kicks. It's like they can. They got a fucking iron jaw, right. and I think it's the same with comics. Look at Richard Pryor. He could sit in silence, which is the equivalent of us just getting pummeled because yeah. we're freaking out. Ah, I haven't gotten a laugh in 10 seconds. I'm freaking out, and that's why he's so great. It's that you've got to be willing to take a fucking big wind-up to the chin and still keep going, and our wind-up to the chin is silence. Yeah. So if you can hang in there, you're good. Yeah, and I think Chappelle has that, too. And there's something yes. about, like, I love guys that smoke on stage. I mean, it goes back to the old guys that used to smoke yeah. cigars on stage because there's such a confidence in saying, fuck you, I need a drag right now, right? Or, like... You know, uh, Lewis Black walking over to the right. stool and taking a drink of his, you know, and just hanging out. Yeah, Ron White, he does. Oh, that's it. what I meant. That's what I meant Ron White, not Lewis Black. Oh yeah, yeah. But George Burns, I mean, that cigar was a punchline indicator, basically. Yeah. 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 It's it's an old move, but I'm I'm a coward. I'm up there going. That's why I have so many jokes. I'm like, ah, they mm -hmm. hate me. They're bored. My parents didn't even pay attention to me. Why would these strangers pay attention mm -hmm. to me? So I got that old childhood bullshit going through me, and I, I'm panicking. Yeah, it's tough, and it's especially tough if you're in a room uh, that isn't your room. Like, right, you know, L.A. Right. is not your town, and right. so you probably felt even less likely to, you know, take a take a breath. You really wanted to just give them what you had. Yeah, but it doesn't totally. come off that way. To me, it just comes off as like, you know, a guy who's worked really fucking hard at writing and getting the jokes tight, who's just digging in. You don't move your feet. You just fucking plant your right. feet and you send yeah. it, man. Just, just ah, fucking. Thanks. Yeah, really good. Um, I appreciate it. So, um, all right, I had a bunch of things I want to ask you about now. Uh, Please. First Sorry, of all, we, you post chatted up a lot. You put you posted a clip recently of uh -huh. uh, of you and I, and it's so funny yes. because I had never seen the clip because I only performed my half in L.A. And did you perform your half in New York? No, I was in L.A., but oh. I guess we were different shoot days. Yeah, we didn't see each other, but we but it's you and me in in the clip together, and uh, and this yeah. is so funny because this is my mug that I drink from. I have the same mug. Really. Yeah, it's somewhere it's packed up right now, but I have that exact mug. That was the only thing I got from the show. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if yeah people go to go to Mark's Instagram and you can watch it. Pre it's a pretty funny clip, actually. Yeah, it's not bad. You yeah. were great, and uh, that was a big gig for me because that was what nine years ago, eight years ago, yeah. or something crazy. I remember I, I slept with the uh, 
the makeup lady from that shoot. She was hot. Yeah, yeah, that was a big one for me. I I was uh, you know, I had some TV confidence. I was a young, you know, I was in my 20s and yeah. uh, uh yeah, I I asked her out and she was like she was like a little older than me. I was going to say she, she was a, a bit older than you, yeah. She she dated like a guy from White Snake or something crazy. Uh-huh. And uh I like an older older broad and she was vintage baby. Yeah, and, and I'm not was... going to name the celebrity, but there's this there's a celebrity that she's the go-to yeah. makeup artist for. Oh, is that right? And that's most of her career. Yeah, is this one, oh, wow. one woman? Yeah, we had a we had a fun little fling for a while. Like I, I'd come back to L.A. and see her again, and she came to New York once, and yeah, she was a good egg. Oh, that's nice, man. I miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some gals like you just take a shot and it works. Yeah, you know, and then some gals take a shot and it goes horribly. But she was into it. I was into it. Very consensual. Very uh, sultry. Good, it'd be, it'd be good so funny nights. if like you you asked her out and she was offended and said no and then all of a sudden like she's putting red down here <laughs> and white yeah. around your mouth and she makes you look like a clown. Yeah, or I go she sends me out in blackface and I'm like there goes my whole career. <laughs> yeah, she was fun. Yeah. Still um, still buddies to this day. Are you really? Yeah, I mean, we don't. We're not doing Christmas cards, but I'll. She'll send me a nice email. I'll send her one. Yeah, she's probably got kids now, and or she's you know in an old folks' home. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, she was cool. Yeah. Um, now a bi- a big part of building up this special is also you uh, you tweet like a motherfucker, and they're they're like jokes that take time. You're not. Oh yeah. You're not just saying like you know I'm having a waffle for lunch. Isn't that crazy? It's like. I want to read some of your tweets, your recent tweets. All right. Um, I I slave over them because I feel guilty about how fun stand up is, and I feel like if somebody's following me, I gotta I gotta deliver a little bit. And there, uh, yeah, Fauci is like a COVID groundhog. Whenever he pops up, I know we have six more weeks of pandemic. <laughs> he looks like a little groundhog. It's a perfect. You need the image. Ah, that's hilarious. Thanks. Oh, yeah, I try. It's that that's perfect because it actually is six more weeks. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. How yeah. great is that? Perfect. It it all lines up. Uh, gross grocery store bag boy says paper or plastic. Customer says whatever you pick. Ba- bag boy says sorry, baggers can't be choosers. All right, that's a cute pun. I had to throw something up. It, it, I, it has to be a joke, and that's my little rule. It has to have a punchline, so I, I had to throw something up real quick. I don't enjoy puns in stand-up, but I like them a lot on Twitter. Agreed. I like Brian Kiley as maybe my, fav- my favorite oh, Twitterer. Brilliant, brilliant yeah. guy. He just he has this joke. Uh, he goes, "My son just made his first commute. My, my my son just made his first confession. Took the cops three hours to break him, but he finally talked." <laughs> <laughs> brilliant joe he's got another one i love uh i call my wife pumpkin because she gets smashed around the holidays <laughs> oh he's got another one um i'm so irish my blood type is o apostrophe <laughs> ah that's fucking great and then he says uh i have a really irish name brian Kylie. very irish name not as irish as my uncle his name is potato mcsmall penis <laughs> Come on! Oh, he's the best. Yeah, he was just on the podcast recently. If you enjoy this, go back and listen to the Brian Kylie podcast. I will um, do that. Well, uh, you know, you know when you drop water on a hot stone oh, and it evaporates immediately. Cheesy. That's how I am with compliments. Wow! Don't you feel like that? It just it just drifts wow. away. When somebody writes a mean comment, it it consumes your whole brain. It puddles. And when somebody writes a nice one, yeah, it's gone. It, it puddles. Yes, and yes, it, it puddles. becomes stagnant, and mosquitoes start being born out of it. Yes. Here yeah, here. isn't that amazing? Like I think about that with um, with stand up. Even is like I can stand in front of a room with three hundred people that are all laughing. They're all like explicitly giving you approval and affection and attention and then i can go back to the hotel room an hour later and feel totally empty same same that's why you got to keep doing it just for that re-up it's almost like gasoline it brings you back 
Which is why it's so hard for us during this pandemic because yes, our significant others are now expecting like full partnership. Yes, yes, we're half the we're we're at fifty percent capacity, much like our crowds. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I and I've always had an out of like you know I'm tired because I just got off the road right. or whatever. Now right. there's like uh, I'm I'm kind of step I'm stepping up and I'm kind of digging it. Like I feel mm. really close to everybody in my family, closer than I've ever felt. Uh -huh. But um, but I don't know. I don't know if we can be cured or if we need to be. Sometimes I wonder what it will be like when I'm, you know, retired. If do does anyone ever retire from comedy? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let me think. There's definitely people who have not done. I mean, Jackie Mason's and, still out there doing it. Carl Reiner. He? Carl Reiner was tweeting right to the end. He was. He yeah. would do talks at, at theaters and. Albert Brooks. What about he? Uh, Steve Martin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. But, but that that was like a special. Okay, Eddie Murphy. Another one, he Un kind of quit. Unfortunately, um, uh, what's her name promised to quit, but then she came back. <laughs> Ellen? No. Well, yeah, Ellen is a good example. No. Oh, uh, Hannah Gadsby. Hannah Gadsby. Yeah, I thought you were quitting, lady. Yeah. Pick a side. Yeah. Can I show you a quick clip? <laughs> can I call Not you on mention, something? She trashes stand up and every th everything she does, and I'm like, well, if it sucks so much, why the fuck are you doing it? Right. Right. God. Listen to us, two straight white men, bad mouth and Anna Gadsby. We're <laughs> the know, problem. We're not allowed to have an opinion. But do then you... if we don't say anything, we're silenced. So <laughs> we're being too silent. So uh, I don't know what the fuck to do. Just you... yell at me, kill me, kill my kids, cut my dick off. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just listen. I'm trying to do the thing where you just kind of <laughs> listen for a while. But then I, uh, you know, but eventually, eventually it's going to boil up. I don't know. Yeah, something's got to give. It feels like this can't last. I mean, who has that great thing of like, you know, it used to be hair metal, and then that has to dip into grunge, and then that has to dip into hip hop because it things have to mutate. You know, you can't right. just have a fever for two years. It's got to break. Right. I don't know. We're That's in a, a fever theory. right now. For more cowbell. For more, or I was thinking more of Foreigner. Got a fever of 103. Oh. Come on, oh, baby. Yeah. Can you do more than dance? Ooh. <laughs> That's a classic. Uh, no wonder batteries die. It's got to hurt to never be included. That's a fucking good joke. Come on. That's a, that's, that's a bumper sticker or something. So then before you go on stage, will you look at your recent tweets and sort of decide whether it's stage worthy? Not, I'm not really a uh, one-linery kind of guy. It's pretty yeah. rare when a tweet makes it into my act, and if it does, I usually expand on it into a chunk or right. a premise kind of thing. But it's pretty rare when the actual tweet is in. Right now, I'm doing a lot of Corona stuff, right. so I'll throw some tweets in about Corona. Right. I had a big one last night. It was uh, even Batman can't save us now. The wrong part of his face is covered. That's hilarious. You know why that's so funny is that Trump. Said uh -huh. something like that. He, but he oh, had yeah? it wrong. Like you know, I forget how he said it, but yeah, he had the mask backwards. What he was trying to say. Uh huh. Um, but I don't badmouth Trump on my podcast because I feel like really? people have already heard it so many fucking times. I know, I know. Jesus, I don't know what I can add to the dialogue, and it's almost like as a comedian, I can't come up with shit that's crazier than what he's already saying. It's too on the nose. He's such a loon. And then, like, Norm MacDonald, my hero, he said that uh, I don't do Trump jokes. It's too easy. And he got shit. They're like, you don't do Trump jokes? How dare you? It's like, the guy's trying to be original. You're taking this yeah. in some politicized fucking angle here. He's just trying to be different than the rest of the people. Isn't that right. what we want our comedians to do? Nah. Right, right. Well, he's like you. I think he's got a touch of the Asperger's. Would you say you have Asperger's? I got something. I can't make eye contact. I uh, assume everyone hates me. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm I'm, I'm a, a little touched. I got insecurity, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I got something. Yeah. And what kind of therapy are you doing? Are you doing like the go back to childhood shit? Are you doing like, yeah. Yeah. Or are you doing like cognitive behavioral therapy where you change the thoughts? Uh, it's childhood. Like, let's get to the root. What the fuck your parents do to you? Let's go to the upbringing. Yeah. Let's get to the source. Try to rewire the shit from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did when I was your age. And then you get older. Yeah. Then you get older and you go, 
all right, just how do I get this thought out and another thought in? <laughs> right, I right. don't care where this thought came from. I just I just need it out right now. Wow. But you seem, I mean, I've been you know listening to your stuff for a long time, and you seem to have really stayed true to you, and I feel like you've gotten, you've improved yourself, you've worked on yourself, but you're still not a fucking wacko. Like, you're not like Alyssa Milano or something. Thank you very much. Um, I think it's, it's like you really remind me of myself when I was younger. Like I was heavily into uh, self improvement. I was trying to have relationships, even though it was a struggle for me. Yeah. And I and I and I was very focused on stand up. And I think that I think stand up was something that that worked symbiotically with self improvement. I do think that you can yes. you can harness some of these good feelings. Obviously, you can harness the fact that you put in a tremendous amount of work on good faith. Yes. On faith, because it is a leap of faith to get into this business and think you're actually going to make a living from it. And Completely. I think when you start to be successful, as as you have been for a few years now, then you can really take that in as um, maybe not just water disappearing on a hot stone. Yeah, but I have so much guilt, and I'm not even Catholic. I have so much guilt about... Uh accepting a compliment and then I, I'm like am I getting cocky am I being yeah. am I being a piece of shit because I, I I let that one sink in and uh, it's just a it's a bad brain up here because that's a very Irish thing because I think in the Irish culture you're always taken down if you start to get a little bit haughty right. somebody's right. always there to go oh look at you you're better than me you think you're right. better than me and uh, but, I have that. For but sure. I thought in Jewish culture it was just the opposite. I thought the Jewish mother always told you that you were wonderful and you deserved everything. Well, I'm not even I'm not Jewish either. Oh. I'm, uh, I'm nothing. So it's even worse because I got nothing to glom oh, onto. I got no right. excuse. My dad was just a real son of a bee. Like uh, this thing haunts me to this day. At one time I was I was killing at like a dinner table with cousins and all these kids when I was younger. And killing. I had, I was running the table, standing up there, sitting. I'm killing. And my dad walks in and goes, what are you, holding court? And yeah. I fucking crushed me. I mean, I felt like I was oh. two inches tall. And I still have that. Every now and then, I'll be like at a dinner party or something, getting a laugh. And I just hear, what are you, holding court? You fucking dweeb. Uh, you yeah. shut up. Nobody laugh. I'm like, you're right. And I sit back down, and I yeah. eat my fucking lima beans. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, that stuff like that. You, you ever have the thing where you're at a like a, a clothing store and you're in the dressing room, you're putting the clothes, and you look pretty good. You look snazzy, you look yeah. cool, and you go, "What do you think you can pull this off? <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are? You think you're fucking Elvis? You think you're Fonzie? Yeah. Take this shit off and return it. You can't pull that off, you yeah. fucking loser." And you right. go, "You're right. I'm, right. I'm, I'm drain it back to the lady. You don't belong in here. You belong in. You're an old navy guy, fat, yeah. fucking saggy <laughs> yeah. pants and blousy shirts. You don't yes. deserve nice shit." Bland colors, shitty sneakers, yeah. white socks. Yeah. Shut up and put on your fucking T-shirt, you piece of garbage. I know. I'm always so jealous of people that have, like, a real style. Like, I know. Yeah, you know, I'm just like, wow, what confidence and sense of self you had. Somebody told you you were okay as a child. God damn it. I know. <laughs> Must be nice. I, I get a haircut. I walk up, my friends go, Oh, haircut, huh? And I go, I know, it sucks. I hate it. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's in there. Yeah, yeah. And you can't, no matter how many years of therapy, it's it's in the wiring. It's in the right, walls. Right, right. I'm going to tell you something, and I'm not making this up. Oh, Having God. kids was the biggest thing that made me not feel like that as much, because you just how? stop, you stop thinking about yourself as much, because uh -huh. you're so busy thinking about them. And it's like, it's like, you know, it's all Eastern philosophy. It's like, you get brought your ego goes down because you're brought out of your own sense of self a lot more. Oh. Now, well, I'm not I, trying I have... to talk you into having kids. No, no, no. I've, I've always wanted them. I just don't think I'd be a good dad, you know, because I don't want to put this shit on a on another person. Right, right. But you're moving we'll just... in with your... But you, how long you been living with your girlfriend for? Uh, You know, two years, something wow. like that. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm hanging. It's a struggle every day to, to commit, but she's a good egg and... Uh, yeah. I'm lucky to have her, blah, 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 but I don't know. It's tough to find somebody that'll put up with, does she have like a nine to five job? Yeah. So that's tough because the hours yes. are opposite. And, you, and then opposite. on top of it, you're gone on the weekends when there's a wedding or a friends are having a dinner party and all that shit. Yep, yep. But as my therapist says, hey, she knew what she, she, knew what she signed up for. That's right. That's right. So, 
Yeah, but. my wife has never she's never given me a hard time about that ever. Wow. Yeah. That's that's rare. Yeah, no, you. I got Good lucky. For her. I, I, I wish you the same. Um Thank all right, you. listen, before we go, uh I want to promote you got date I don't know which of your dates are still valid. I'll i I'll read the ones that were on your website. You're okay. gonna be uh July July 9th at the Skyline Comedy Club. Yeah, that's still hanging in there because it's not a hot spot. Wisconsin is good. Uh, Dr. Grins in Grand Rapids, Michigan, July 16th, gone. Gone. Miami? Up in the air. Dude, that's a little hot. I think Miami's a little hot spotty right now. Oh, yeah, that's Florida. Yeah, that's probably going to go. All right. Uh, Comedy Zone in Greenville, South Carolina? That's out. That's out. Wise Guys in Salt Lake City, August 21st? I I think that's still... That's that's a, a good... More than a month away, so I think that one will hold. All right, so how are people going to know whether or not the shows are... Yeah, I guess you'll tweet out? I'll tweet out, and I'll I'll get on my web gal right now and tell her to do some snipping. Get on that web gal, and then um, the special Out to Lunch is on YouTube. You can also get it on Google Play. You can get it on oh, Spotify. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's all over the place. And uh, All right, well, don't thanks get, for watching any of it. And don't get distracted by the donut. He had one previous to the one he's holding in his hand. <laughs> yes. And he's wiping that. Um, also, when things get back to normal on Tuesdays, the uh, hot soup with the fat black pussycat. Yeah, it's a, a comedy cellar adjacent. You know, it's one of those like lounge rooms they have. Sure. Like, kind of like the, the belly room. Yeah, I know it well. There you go. If you come by, come do a set. We'd love to have you. Oh, I'd love it. I, I want to be that guy that shows up at a bar show and people go, hey, you want to go on? Yeah. And I go, you, how about me, huh? Y- you will. You, we will do that. Even if we book you, when you show up, we'll still go, hey, <laughs> you showed up. You want to go on? We'll still make it a thing. Uh, and I also, have a podcast also. Don't forget to go back and watch old episodes of How to Be a Grown-Up. <laughs> I don't know if you can find that one. <laughs> that ran for about eight minutes. And Mark Norman uh, with a D is his yes. handle on Twitter and Instagram. So uh, that'll do it, Mark. This is a pleasure because I know I've been in New York. Uh, I was in New York for two summers working on crashing, and we tried to get together. And you were on the road so much, and I was working so much. It never happened. So I'm I'm glad we were able to get it together. I totally took that personally. That's how much of a psycho I am. Did you really? You were like, I lost my recorder. I left it on the Amtrak, and I was like, that motherfucker oh, is bailing. Oh, that's right. I forgot I, about I, that. We is had that it true. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I kept I kept calling Amtrak. I filled out a form, not Amtrak, wow. Metro, Metro North, and then okay. finally, they, and they kept saying it's not here. And then finally, one day, I was at Grand Central. I went to Lost and Found, and I said, Do you happen to have? And I described the date and what it was. They fucking had it. They had my recorder. What? It was like $900 worth of equipment. It was just sitting what? in a bag and lost and found. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It ain't the old New York, I'll tell you that. That's so funny that you would take that personally, that the day of I would cancel, as if like yeah. I didn't realize until that afternoon that- well, That's the psycho in me. I I just thought, oh, what a perfect excuse to get out of this, but- <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a lunatic because obviously you set up the the, the pod time yeah, and all that. So right. oh, yeah. that's funny. Uh, I'm a all crazy right. person. Well, let's do it again soon and continued good luck with the special. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me, and uh, it's an honor. And praise Allah. Praise Allah. Okay, Kevin Hart, everybody, <laughs> have it a hand yes. for him.